Good day to everyone joining us and welcome to today's XTalks webinar. Today's talk is entitled Rapid Whole Genome Sequencing in the Ever-Evolving Age of COVID-19. My name is Sydney and I'll be your XTalks host for today. Today's webinar will run for approximately 60 minutes. This presentation includes a Q&A session with our speakers. This webinar is designed to be interactive and webinars work best when you're involved. So please feel free to submit questions and comments for our speakers throughout the presentation using the questions chat box and we'll try to attend to your questions during the Q&A session. This chat box is located in the control panel on the right hand side of your screen. If you require any assistance, please contact me at any time by sending a message using this chat panel. At this time, all participants are in listen only mode. Please note that this event will be recorded and made available for streaming on xtalks.com. At this point, I'd like to thank Clear Labs who developed the content for this presentation. Clear Labs harnesses the power of next generation sequencing to simplify complex diagnostics for clinical and applied markets. By creating a fully automated platform that brings together DNA sequencing, robotics, and cloud-based analytics, Clear Labs democratizes genomics applications to deliver increased clarity. Clear Labs' turnkey platform accelerates outcomes and improves accuracy, from foodborne outbreaks such as listeria and salmonella to infectious diseases, including SARS-CoV-2. With a novel approach, Clear Labs is helping the world better understand, track, and mitigate tomorrow's novel pathogens. Now I'd like to introduce our speakers for today's event. Sasan Amini combined his academic expertise and passion for healthy living when he co-founded Clear Labs with a mission to set a new paradigm for food safety and quality. Prior to serving as the CEO of Clear Labs, he worked in the advanced research department at Illumina. Sasan earned his PhD in genomics from Princeton and holds multiple patents and publications in the field. The focus of Dr. Abdul Hamid's research is the antimicrobial resistance mechanism in gram-negative bacteria. He has conducted investigations to characterize molecular mechanisms of antimicrobial resistance, especially in gram-negative bacteria. With the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic, his research studies are also focusing on finding new effective diagnostics methods to conserve testing reagents and expand SARS-CoV-2 testing, such as group testing for pooled specimens in addition to characterization of SARS-CoV-2 genotypes. He did a MicroMaster program at the University of Maryland Global Campus to solidify his background in bioinformatics. And now, without further ado, I'd like to hand the mic over to our first speaker. Sasan, you may begin when ready. Thank you, Sydney and the XTAX team uh, for giving us the opportunity to present. Uh, so today, uh, me and Dr. Uh, Abdul Hamid would like to talk about rapid whole genome sequencing in the ever-evolving age of COVID-19. Next slide, please. So a little bit of history about our company, Clear Labs. We were founded in 2014 with a group of multidisciplinary individuals with expertise across genomics, software, machine learning, microbiology, automation. We are headquartered in the Bay Area, San Francisco, close to San Francisco. Uh, and uh, the company is privately held and founded and also funded by a number of prominent investors, as you can see on this slide. Next slide, please. Uh, so what Clear Labs does is to offer a one-stop shop solution for turnkey and remotely deployed genomics application. So what we do is that we actually deploy our hardware and instrumentation in third-party laboratories and provide them everything that they need in order to go from sample to answer. So that includes the hardware, the consumables, the analytics, and the software that runs on the cloud installation and training and all the troubleshooting needed in order to operate the instrumentation. Next slide, please. So uh, on the clinical application side, we are currently offering an instrumentation that is the first fully automated system that has dual purpose or two applications. One of them is for diagnostic of SARS-CoV-2 which was approved by the US FDA under Emergency Use Authorization or EUA, which provides diagnostic test results 
genomic subtyping, mutation and lineage reporting in high throughput for up to 192 samples at a time. And then the second mode of operation is shown on the left-hand side of the slide, which is a whole genome sequencing assay that sequences the entirety of the genome and it provides higher resolution and it's perfect if you plan to submit your data to GSAID, COVIDnet, NCBI, or similar repositories that pretty much host whole genome sequencing information. So the difference between the two modes is that one of them, the diagnostic one, sequences part of the genome, not the entirety of the genome, but it's designed to detect the SARS-CoV-2 and provide some level of granular information about the subtypes of the uh, virus versus the other mode, the whole genome sequencing mode, which sequences the entirety of the genome. It is for lower throughput applications. Next slide. Uh, so if we zoom out, the high level workflow that we support on Clear Labs platform is shown in this diagram. So all the green circles are the steps that are fully automated and covered on the ClearDX platform. That includes the sample registration, all the steps of the library preparation, including cDNA synthesis, amplification of targets, molecular indexing, which enable us to trace which signal belongs to which sample, and nucleic acid cleanup. Then following by sequencing, pretty much loading the library, prepared library onto a sequencing flow cell and starting the sequencing run. And then when the sequencing run is complete, pretty much the bioinformatics pipeline kicks in that provides the raw sequencing data for the power users and also the analyze and interpreted results uh, to the end user. And all of that is wrapped with in our reporting and analytics software that makes access to data and visualization simpler. So those are all the green circles that are fully covered by the system. But as you can see, the whitish circles, the sample collection and the nucleic acid extraction, or in case of SARS-CoV-2, the RNA extraction, those are not automated on our system. And that actually happens off the deck. Next slide. This is a closer look at the ClearDX platform. As you can see in the picture on the left-hand side of the slide, there is a screen that provides the user interface to the operator to be able to run the machine. There is a liquid handling backbone that takes care of all the steps of the library prep. There is a sequencing device that is embedded on the deck. And when the library prep is done, the robot itself automatically loads the library onto the sequencing flow cell with zero human intervention. So that is why we actually can go from sample in to sequence out with a fully streamlined workflow. So our fully automated next generation sequencing platform enables population and scale disease management, enables descriptive diagnostic of pathogens and diseases. And what we do mean by descriptive diagnostic is to differentiate this from legacy diagnostic. Legacy diagnostic has been dominated by tools like PCR and immunassay that by default usually generate one to a couple of bits of information. So they usually tell you, did you find a pathogen or not? That is the end of the information. But with descriptive diagnostic, we leverage the depth of information that comes from next generation sequencing or NGS to not only detect the pathogen, but also collect additional information that could make that diagnostic more actionable. Like for example, identifying antimicrobial resistance information or looking at similarity between different strains and variants that could be emerging in the case of that disease that we're studying. Everything that we do on the analytics side is cloud-based and makes it very secure and scalable and always available to the end user. It also enables us to potentially do troubleshooting of uh, the instrumentation and workflow remotely through the cloud. And this overall creates a more robust experience for the end customer because we don't need to actually show up on site to take care of every single detail that goes wrong with the instrument. The workflow is streamlined to support a range of applications within clinical and applied markets. And overall, it supports pathogen surveillance, which was a concept that through the lens of COVID-19, everyone is now familiar with that. Next slide, please. 
So when you talk to experts about next generation uh, sequencing and what are the challenges that they have not really adopted that solution in their laboratory, they usually talk about six major challenges, technical expertise, time to resolve, cost, bioinformatics, computing infrastructure, and clinical integration. And when you think about this, actually Clear Labs check five of these boxes out of the gate for you. Technical expertise, not needed. This system is even simpler than a qPCR machine to be operated. Time to resolve, we actually managed to deliver, for example, SARS-CoV-2 whole genome sequencing in less than 24 hours, which is within that actionable time frame that the public health laboratories are looking for. So we really actually make it rapid and happen in a time frame that is actionable. Cost, because we enable the operator to bash a number of samples, but do it in a smaller batch sizes. You can pretty much do near real-time sequencing without needing to wait and actually create a large batch of samples and uh, do it at a price point that is very cost effective and keeping uh, taking into the consideration that we pretty much eliminate the labor costs because the labor involvement is minimal. So overall, we offer a very, very cost effective solution. Bioinformatics, to the extent possible, we try to streamline that. But in the field of bioinformatics, there are many power users that they would like to have access to raw data and do their own type of algorithm development and pipelines. So what we do at Clear Labs is not only offer the raw data for the power users, but also the analyzed data for the entities that have less access to bioinformatician. So this way we can actually serve both sides of the spectrum. And computing infrastructure happens on the cloud, which is very secure, very scalable, very cost effective, and make it very attractive for the end user. Next slide, please. So uh, we actually have seen tremendous success with our fully automated source code to sequencing platform and more specifically within the public health labs. And the reason actually many of our existing customers really like us is summarized in this table that compares clear DX's workflow with the legacy sequencing workflow that many of our customers were using before having access to clear labs. So on the first row, time to resolve on clear DX is approximately 20 hours versus four to 10 days, which was the average time with legacy workflows. So we actually provide a significant time saving and accelerate time to result. The approximate hands-on time, the second row, is less than one hour. To be more specific, we are talking about 15 to 30 minutes of loading the samples and the reagents versus nine to 10 hours with legacy workflow. And with regards to human touch point, we only have a single human touch point. So the operator spend that 15 to 30 minutes to load the samples, to load the reagents, to walk away, and they don't need to worry about anything else versus the legacy workflows that you have to actually do it across 10 plus steps, which keep the personal tied up for an extended period of time over a couple of days. Next slide. This is a two screenshots of the sample reports that our system generates. The top one is for the SARS-CoV-2 diagnostic test, which was approved under the FDA EUA. And as you can see, it provides a diagnostic test result for up to 192 samples at a time, and not only flag the positives and negatives, but also provide information about critical mutations and subtype information of the virus. But as I mentioned earlier, this does not sequence the entirety of the viral genome. The second product that we also talked about is the whole genome sequencing workflow. And a screenshot of the results uh, page is shown in the bottom side. And that is where pretty much the operator can have access to the raw sequencing data, like the FASTA and FASTQ file, and also pretty much the assembled genome. And they can pretty much all leverage this sequencing data coming from our uh, system, the assembled genome in order to submit to GSAID, or they have access to the raw FASTQ file if they would like to do their own assembly and take it to an alternative pipeline. Next slide, please. So to kind of wrap up and summarize the benefits of the ClearDX platform, I think we can put it under two major buckets. One of them is the technical benefits and the other one are the workflow benefits. On the technical side, 
uh, pretty much the superior performance of the system when it comes to sensitivity and specificity and leveraging the depth of information coming from next generation sequencing. The fact that you can do hypothesis free pathogen surveillance for cases that you don't even know what the root cause uh, or the key actually pathogenic agent is. And then offering descriptive diagnostic of the pathogens, which doesn't stop at a binary yes or no, but collect additional pieces of information that make that information more actionable for the end user. On the second bucket, the workflow benefits, the ease of use with walkaway automation, the fact that you only have a single human touch point, so you can just set up everything, set it and forget it, walk away from the system. That is a major benefit and uh, kind of a selling point for our system. The fact that it's an integrated solution that goes end to end and the customer only deal with one vendor, that is another big attraction. The seamless integration of data analytics pipeline that enable us to, for example, provide not only the raw data, but also the assembled genome, but potentially for also integrate with TeraBio and other bioinformatics resources that the end user need to operate and connect with. The faster time to result that provide the data with an actionable time frame. The fact that you can do it in a cost effective way by eliminating the labor. And as you can imagine, the labor is a big part of the overall cost associated with uh, these types of complex uh, tests. The fact that everything is reproducible and fully automated. So no matter who the operator is, you always are going to get the same result out of the system. Operate, uh, offering an alternative supply chain compared to PCR and immunoassay on the diagnostic side in days that we are seeing actually a peak uh, in the cases and there's a shortage of supply. And finally, the reliability of the system, the fact that everything happens by robotic system versus uh, kind of individuals, those are all pretty much the workflow benefits that we can actually talk about and summarize here. Next slide, please. Uh, so the key customers uh, that Clear Labs has that are using our system include public health laboratories. That is a big area of focus for us. And we are very proud to say that now more than 50% of public health labs in US are using Clear Labs platform. Many of the reference laboratories in US, international government labs, the VA system. So these are all the customers that we have on the clinical side with source code to diagnostic. But prior to coming into the clinical space, uh, we had a history within the food safety space, having automated solution for salmonella and listeria that are being primarily used by food manufacturers and processing plants. Next slide, please. And our system, as I mentioned, has been used by a growing number of the public health labs. And uh, one of them to highlight here was the Nebraska uh, Department of Public Health and uh, also uh, uh, UNMC or uh, Medical Center. Uh, and the work that uh, the uh, UNMC team has done has been highlighted in multiple publications and also news outlets. You can actually see some examples here. And with no further ado, I'm going to actually pass it on to Dr. Abdelhamid, who has been one of the key uh, researchers and lead investigators uh, doing uh, using clear DXS system in his laboratory. Thank you very much, Sasan, and thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, webinar. Today we will uh, discuss the applications of uh, ClearDX system in the diagnosis and surveillance of SARS-CoV-2. Uh, and uh, first we will address the shortage of test supplies during COVID-19 uh, pandemic and also the effect of mutations that happens in the virus on the accuracy of the PCR testing available for COVID-19 testing and how we can use the clear diagnostic uh, system to overcome these two issues. Before we start, I'm just going to remind you a little bit about the virus and the epidemiology uh, worldwide. Uh, SARS-CoV-2 is the uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus type 2. It is an enveloped positive single-stranded RNA virus which caused coronavirus disease 2019 COVID-19. As of April 1st, 
2022. And according to WHO COVID-19 dashboard, there are more than 486 million cases of COVID globally, and it was associated with more than 6 million deaths all over the world. Here in the United States, we have more than 79 million cases of COVID and almost 1 million cases of uh, deaths. So in any pandemic in general, there are always the concern of the high demand for the testing kits, which might result in the shortage in the nation about the supplies for the kit uh, diagnostics for any pandemic, not only in SARS-CoV-2. So here at MPHL, we thought of the shortage right away, actually, and American Society of uh, Microbiology conducted a survey to see whether there are shortages of the COVID-19 uh, testing all over the US or not in September 2020. So 145 CLIA certified laboratories participated in this ASM survey. And there are two types of testing and they were used, the lab developed testing and the co commercial molecular assay testing. So ASM found in that survey that at least 41.2% of uh, labs doing lab developed testing, they have testing supplies shortages compared to 68.8% of the commercial molecular assay uh, testing, there are supply shortages in those labs too. So here at uh, MPHL, we were thinking how we're gonna uh, approach any shortage if it ever happened. So we thought about two different approaches. First, sample pooling, which is very uh, traditionally used in screening for in uh, blood transfusion labs. And we tried to do that on the nasopharyngeal swab for COVID-19. We definitely succeeded in that, but there are two drawbacks for sample pooling. First of all, it is time consuming. Second, you cannot pull more than limited number of samples, which are, is totally dependent on the uh, prevalence of the virus in the population you are testing. So we said we need a more robust technology to use. So we thought about next generation sequencing right away to be used in COVID-19 diagnosis. In searching the market back then, we're talking uh, like early uh, 2020, we found a clear uh, DX uh, system. And the reason we picked up, it is a very unique uh, system as Sasan mentioned in his presentation. It is a fully, fully automated system where it's combined of the Hamilton robot, and the grid ion sequencer, and they are both connected to the uh, computer. So it's very easy to use, fully automated system with very short time of hands-on time. We can use it, as Hassan mentioned, in two applications. One is for the uh, diagnostics itself, uh, clear DX, EUA, NGS, SARS-CoV diagnostic assay, and the other assay, which is used completely for surveillance, it is the ClearDX whole genome SARS-CoV-2 surveillance assay. Before we talk about those two applications and how we use them uh, at MPHL, let me briefly touch down on how NGS work in general and the bioinformatics pipeline that follows. First, the clinical sample, which is a nasopharyngeal a swab in this case is uh, we got it from the patient and then we do RNA extraction on this sample. On the instructed RNA, we do next generation sequencing. There are two parts of the NGS. The first part is the library pre preparation, which is done by the Hamilton robotic platform, which is uh, robotic 
compared to like three or four hours of complete technical hands-on to work it on the bench manually. And the second part, which is bioinformatics pipeline, which is also a time consuming if you want to do it manually, while in this machine, it does it all by itself for you. In the library uh, preparation, the, R the extracted RNA is uh, synthesized into complement DNA and then amplified into uh, DNA uh, through uh, several rounds of multiple uh, PCR and we use or the machine actually use the Arctic protocol for this. And then the indexing, the indexing and multiplexing of the samples all together to get them ready for the sequencing. The sequencing use nanopore sequencing methodology. And we have here the grid iron, which has five chips. Each chip uh, can be done 190 specimen, 92 specimens per each chip. For the bioinformatics uh, pipeline, there is a demultiplexing of the specimens and then alignment of the sequence and base calling. And then the machine generates the raw data, which is called FASTQ. And from this raw data, the machine generates the whole genome assembly, which is uh, FASTA. As Sasan said, for the diagnostic application, it amplifies and sequence only part of the genome and detect very unique uh, and critical mutations. So when we use FASTA for the diagnostic application, we are looking for yes or no answer only. It means do, do the, does the patient have COVID or not? Let's see what we did in NPHL to validate this study. Actually, uh, we collected 390 clinical samples, nasopharyngeal uh, samples, from patients suspected to have COVID-19. And we tested them side by side by the ClearDX system and CDC RT-PCR kit, which is the gold standard kit to uh, diagnose COVID-19. And uh, the results from both platforms were compared to each other. So out of 266 positive specimens by CDC kit, there were 249 positive by clear DX uh, testing. And 17 were false negative by clear DX, but they were positive by CDC uh, testing. Out of 124 negative testing, or samples by CDC, they were 123 negative by a clear DX, which makes the sensitivity of clear DX 93.6% and the specificity 99.1% and the total accuracy 95.3%. In addition, the positive predictive value of the machine is 99.6 and the negative predictive value uh, was 87.8%. Number 17 was uh, like important for us. We wanted to analyze why we have 17 false negative uh, testing by the clear DX. So we analyzed each specimen by itself and we saw how can the clear DX detect those. So based on the cycle threshold for the PCR, the CDC kit can detect any CT value between 15 and 40 cycles. And from here, the true positive specimens, we can see clearly that a clear DX system can detect all specimens that have CT value between 15 and 40. For the false negative results, as we see in here, most of the false negative uh, specimens have CT value more than 35. And according to literature, the CT, the viruses with low concentration with CT value even 33 and above are non-viable. In this figure in here, all specimens, all specimens have CT value more than 28 CT. And why this is important? Because according to CDC recommendation, in all surveillance that we are doing by ourselves and with CDC, 
any specimen with CT value that is more than uh, 28 is not good specimen for sequencing because it doesn't have good uh, quality. And all the specimens that were false negative by clear DX were more than 28 uh, CT value. Based on this data, clear DX EUA NGS SARS-CoV-2 diagnostic assay is a powerful tool in diagnosis of SARS-CoV-2. And actually, ClearDx got the FDA approval for this uh, platform to be used in diagnosis of COVID-19 in September 2020. So, and because we can run 192 specimens on this machine at the same time, it can definitely help in solving the shortage of test supply that I mentioned earlier during COVID-19 pandemic. The other thing, it detects very important two mutations in the virus, which are D614G and P314L, which cannot be detected in the normal PCR uh, commercial assays. That's why this the clear DX can solve also the mutation difference in the virus and it can detect all of them. So this is for the first uh, clinical diagnostic uh, approach. For the surveillance approach, we have the same uh, algorithm that I mentioned. However, in here, we are doing whole genome sequencing for the whole virus, not only parts of the virus. We sequence part of the virus like we did in the diagnostics. And the FASTA files, the whole assembled genome, can be used to detect the uh, clade of the virus using specific soft uh, website that is available for free, which is the next clade, uh, next strain uh, website. And we can detect the lineage and the variants of the virus using the pangolin uh, website. Also, we upload the whole, the assembled whole genome to GISAID, which is the data gene bank, the data pays for uh, COVID-19 all over the world, and it is available for free. In the last two years, using ClearDX system, we analyzed a lot of outbreaks all over Nebraska. We analyzed outbreaks in hospitals, in nursing homes, in uh, daycares, and believe it or not, we used it also to analyze outbreaks in even in weddings. So I have tens and tens of examples of the outbreaks that we detected in uh, at MPHL using this uh, clear DX uh, system. And we are the biggest uh, Nebraska uh, public health lab in whole Nebraska. We uh, identified all variants in Nebraska. We are the first lab in all Nebraska to detect all variants at uh, in Nebraska using clear DX uh, system. So among all those uh, outbreaks, I picked three interesting uh, outbreaks to show you the robustness and the powerful technique that we use, which is clear DX system. So first of all, we uh, we are again the first lab in Nebraska to detect uh, Omicron variant. On November 29th, 2021, we had like six cases of suspected COVID-19 in one family. One of the patients came from uh, Nigeria a few days before November 29th. So all patients were sent to NPHL and were tested positive by RT-PCR for COVID-19. And luckily enough, all of them had CT value less than 28, so we knew they were good uh, targets for whole genome sequencing using ClearDx system. Well, we suspected those might have Omicron because it was detected five days before that on, February, uh, on November 24th. 2021 in South Africa. 
we did uh, sequencing using clear DX uh, system, and sure enough, all of those were in Omicron uh, genotype. And again, we were the first lab in Nebraska to detect Omicron variant. Then we used the whole ge genome sequencing data that we got from clear DX system to see how close those variants are. So we did something called the SNP analysis, single, single nucleotide polymorphism, to see uh, what are the nucleotide difference between the six samples. And you see zeros all over this table, which means they are all identical. And there was only one single I, I introduction to Nebraska for this case, which is the person of interest who traveled from Nigeria to his family here in Nebraska. And the phylogenetic tree, as you see, it shows only one a cluster. So that shows this travel history of the index patient, the person of interest, and the phylogenetic tree of the secondary cases indicated that, that there is only one introduction to Nebraska of the Imacron uh, variant through this international uh, travel. In addition, all this was done, believe it or not, because of the fully automated system of clear DX uh, system, believe it or not, it was done in 24 hours only. So that shows that the rapid identification and epidemiological characterization of, the characterization of this uh, cluster underscore the importance of robustness of the genome surveillance to detect and respond to SARS-CoV variant of concern in timely uh, manner. And this, remember, we received the specimen on 29th of November 2021. This study was published in MMWR on December 31st, 2021, within four weeks only. So this is one example of the outbreak. Another example I will show you, the uh, vaccine breakthrough infection cases in Nebraska. According to CDC, vaccine breakthrough is any patient who has SARS-CoV RNA or antigen detected in respiratory specimen at least 14 days after completing the primary series of FDA EUA SARS-CoV-2 vaccine. So last year, from January 1st to July 31st of 2021, in Nebraska, we collected all cases of COVID-19. And we categorized those cases into two different big groups, the vaccinated people, uh, group and the non-vaccinated group. Again, all those specimens were nasopharyngeal specimens. And we looked at that RT-PCR CT value. All uh, specimens with CT value with less than 28 were good candidates for whole genome sequencing using clear DX system. So in this seven months a period in 2021, we collected 62,842 COVID cases in Nebraska. Among those 60,000 plus cases of unvaccinated people and 1,913 of vaccinated people who were infected by COVID after uh, completing, completing their vaccine schedules. 1,000 plus of those were from Pfizer and 554 from Moderna were uh, vaccinated by Moderna and 306 patients were vaccinated by Johnson and Johnson. And 720 of those were, of the vaccinated breakthrough cases were in males and the rest were in females. And 1,148 of those were symptomatic and 415 of those were had medical underlying medical conditions such as chronic lung diseases or heart diseases or diabetes or hypertension and other chronic uh, renal uh, diseases we used clear dx to see to do whole genome sequencing on both actually 
the cases that are good for sequencing in vaccinated and unvaccinated uh, population. So from unvaccinated population, we sequenced 2,927 and 577 from vaccinated were good targets for sequencing. As you see in, in this column, ClearDx could detect all variants that were available back then, from alpha to delta to gamma, epsilon, beta, and iota, and lambda. Back then, we did not have Omicron. Even it, it also detected the genotypes of the, non, the other non-variant of concern or variant of interest. And as you see from this table, that Delta virus was the most common strain associated with vaccine breakthrough in our uh, uh, state, Nebraska. This paper actually is in press in GDI, GIDC uh, paper. Another uh, a good example actually that happened here in the hospital in Nebraska Medicine, we had an, an outbreak in solid organ transplant division between September 29th and October 4th of 2021. We had 13 patients and staff who had COVID and I was contacted by the IDIC team in the hospital to do the testing for those 13 patients and staff. All uh, these patients were PCR positive for uh, COVID and the breakdown of the CT value, all of them had CT value less than 28, except those two in red. Those, they have CT value 30 and CT value 37, which means right away that those have very low quality of the specimen. So they are not going to get good sequencing results out of those. So I ran the rest on clear dx uh, system to see what kind of outbreak we have and what kind of genotypes we have so first of all all of those were delta virus the 21a b16172 the following question after that how related those two together so i run the snip analysis uh, matrix and I saw that there was two different clusters. One cluster, all patients in red, all, all specimens in red, with single nucleotide polymorphism from zero up to four SNPs difference. Those were one cluster, and the other smaller cluster, the two in black, they were 26 to 30 uh, SNP differences compared to the red, while they were the two, those two patients were identical. And in the phylogenetic tree, as you see in here, we have two uh, different clusters, the two patients in uh, black and the rest are in red. This is very important because it means we have two sources of infection one source in the small cluster, the black cluster, and one source in the red cluster. Uniquely enough, until that point, I really did not ask the ID and the IC people like to give me more data about those patients. So when I contacted them back with this result, they were super excited because it looked like all 13 patients were on the same floor, but those two patients in black were from the administration on one side of the floor of the uh, organ transplant floor, uh, floor and those red were both uh, patients and uh, uh, solid organ transplant patients and medical health provider on diagonally opposite part of the floor. So one of those two patients started in this uh, small cluster, the outbreak uh, first, and independently from those uh, from this big uh, cluster. And this cluster was infected with only one of the solid organ transplant uh, 
patients and he infected the other patients and the medical health. So this is really very, very important because we detected two independent clusters with two independent sources. And the ID physicians and ID IC uh, team and our hospital actually wrote an abstract about it. And they recently presented that in the uh, US uh, meeting for uh, infection control and infectious diseases uh, share. So I thought this is very interesting case to show you, to show you, to show you the robustness of clear DX system that even though within like 13 patients, we could detect two different sources, two independent sources for two different outbreaks that are happening at the same time in the same hospital, even in the same division, even in the same floor. And actually, the, we are writing the paper right now. So based on these three different outbreaks that I show you, or the three different studies, ClearDX system is a unique tool to detect SARS-CoV genotypes, and it is able to differentiate outbreaks. The take-home messages of uh, this uh, presentation, clear DX system can solve the shortage of test supply during COVID-19 pandemic, and it can be used for COVID-19 diagnosis, monitoring all new variants, and we can use it to perform molecular epidemiology. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll turn microphone back to Sydney and Sasan. All right. Well, thank you very much for that very insightful presentation. It is now time for our Q&A session. I've already received a few questions, so I will start with those. So our first question, how does the Clear DX system detect and report new variants of concern? Okay, I will take care of this uh, question. Actually, through uh, whole genome sequencing, it detects the whole genome of the virus it detects all uh, known mutations, the old known mutations, and also it detects the new mutations, and it's all assembled in uh, whole genome assembled faster, and we compare it to the GIS-8 database to know what kind of genotype we have. Is it old variant or a new variant? I wonder if Sasan want to add anything to my answer. No, that pretty much you covered it very well, uh, Baha. So the next generation sequencing speaks the universal language of all these bacterial and viruses, right? Which are A's and T's and G's and C's or U's and uh, used in the RNA cases. And so just by sequencing it in an unbiased fashion and comparing it to a reference genome, as you mentioned. All right, thank you. Our next question, does the clear DX system need to be revalidated each time a new variant of concern is found? No, not really, because it's already validated and it's FDA approved for the diagnostic application and for surveillance uh, application. As I mentioned, every time we have a new variant, Clear DX detects a new variant. So no need for revalidation. However, we, are, we always do something called the quality uh, assurance and the quality assurance that we are doing with the clear DX system, even with new variant, we always upload the FASTA files to GIS-8 and we compare the, our results to the results available in GIS-8 and there is 100% correlation between our data and the GIS-8 data. So this is when we're talking about old uh, variants. With the new variant, we will tell GIS-8 that we detected a new variant using a clear DX system, and they will do, they will update their software and their web, website to include this new variant in order for other people to use it. All right, next question. What type of bioinformatics expertise is needed to run the clear DX system? Well, this is a robust part of the clear DX uh, system in bioinformatics. We clearly need nothing, to be honest with you. It does everything to us from indexing, multiplexing, 
then uh, cleaning of the base uh, calls, the demultiplexing, uh, the FASTA queue, and then the uh, final assembly in FASTA A. It does it all by itself from A to Z, so anyone can use it. So it doesn't really need anything for bioinformatics. It's a great system. Wonderful. All right. How do you see the ClearDX system evolving as the pandemic wanes over time? Will utility, what utility will the system offer? So yeah, I can take this one. Uh, so our the mission of our company is to liberating genomics to all. And through that lens, what we are planning to do is to make different applications of next generation sequencing very easy for the end users. So you can imagine beyond this pandemic, there are so many other disease indications, right? Like infectious diseases that uh, the end user need to further characterize a given pathogen, right? Understand the similarity between different strains, antimicrobial resistance information, uh, the resistant patterns that might emerge. And so our goal is to pretty much keep adding more menu to the system. And this way we can enable the end user to continue to use complex genomic application in a simplified interface. All right, how long does it take to install, train, and begin operating the instrument in the laboratory? Yeah, I can uh, take this one as well. So usually the installation takes a couple of days. Uh, it happens on customer site in the laboratory. And then when the installation is done, we spend a day to day and a half to train the customer, uh, pretty much let them uh, load the instrument with the reagents, with the samples and go from A to Z. And after that, pretty much the system is handed over to the customer to be able to run it on their own. All right, our next question is directed to you, uh, Dr. Abdelhamid. What software are you using for generating the SNP matrices and phylogenic trees? Okay, this is a very good question. There are uh, different uh, software. Uh, there is one I use it from University of uh, Barcelona, which I really can't <laughs> remember uh, the name. There is also the uh, Center of uh, Genomic which is in one of the uh, Denmark uh, universities that I use also. Also, we have here a hub center, which is Holland Computing uh, Center at University of Nebraska Lincoln. I use uh, the, uh, uh, their softwares and I use the Linux operating system and command line. So most of those I use it manually, so to speak. All right, well, those are all the questions. So thank you very much for those answers. We've reached the end of the Q&A portion of the webinar. Uh, if we couldn't attend to your questions, the team at Clear Labs may follow up with you, or if you have any further questions, you can direct them to the email address on your screen. So thank you everyone for participating in today's webinar. You'll be receiving a follow-up from Xtalks with access to the recorded archive for this event. And that was survey window will be popping up on your screen and your participation is appreciated appreciated as it will help us to improve our webinars. Now please join us in thanking our speakers, Sasan Amini and Baha Abdelhamid. We hope you found this webinar informative and have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.